So one of the things that I missed when I moved from Notion to Obsidian was being able to have a content calendar. And for that, I liked being able to have a table view and then a board view and then also a calendar view. So a little something like this is my Notion content calendar, which I don't really use anymore. And it's pretty easy to turn it into a board view and back into a calendar view. But I've quickly found out that on Obsidian, it isn't quite as easy to replicate this because it doesn't natively have this functionality. Turns out that there are just a, a few plugins that I can use to recreate this entire setup so that it looks something like this. So let's get into how I plan everything I create as a developer advocate on a content calendar in Obsidian. So it all starts with the Kanban plugin. If we go over to this is a content board that I've created using the Kanban plugin. So if you don't yet know how to install a plugin, you just go to settings in Obsidian and then community plugins. And then if you haven't turned safe mode off already, go ahead and do that. And then you'll be able to go and browse through the different community plugins that are available. There are so many of them, and it's really changed the way I look at Obsidian. Honestly, if Obsidian could not be extended with plugins, I probably wouldn't be using it as much because I got a lot of value out of being able to customize my experience of Obsidian. So you just go over here and type in the Kanban plugin, and then I've already got it installed, but you'll see a button here to install it and then enable it. Once you've got that done, then you open up the command pane. So I'm on a Mac, so that's a command P for me. And you type in Kanban, and then you create a new board. So I won't do that for you here because I've already got one, but I'll take you through what I've done on, with that board. The way that I do it is each of these lists is like a stage. So I like to be able to see at a glance what um, types of content are in what, sta what stage because I create blog, I write blog posts, I create videos, I also do a lot of presentations, or maybe I'll make a pull request in a repository. And sometimes these things are going on simultaneously. So I need to make sure I know what's where and what's ready to publish. So I have ideas, researching, filming, writing or coding, things that need editing, things that need scheduling, and then things that need some post-publishing activities before I actually move them over to done. And moving things between one status to another is pretty easy. This is the Obsidian as a content calendar thing that I'm doing right now. And to move that over, I can just put that over there. So to create a note, from one of these cards, you just click here and then click create note from card. Now I've already created a note from this, so I'm just gonna click that and this is what it looks like. So I really like this because it lets me kind of um, put more into what I want to do in that bit of content or what still needs to be done. This is where I'll put like a progress report but it's also where I put things like uh, checklists. So I have a whole bunch of pre-production and post-production checklists that I wanna make sure that I do so that um, I'm also keeping consistent with the type of content that I'm creating. And one of the ways that I'm doing that is by using the templating plugin. So that actually is a core plugin. So if you go to settings here and core plugins, you'll find templates there already installed with Obsidian, but not activated by default. So you just tick that on and you don't really have to do this, but I just find it really useful because now when I have a new content idea, let's say this is a video, I already have a command for inserting a template or you can do that in the command pane too. Yeah, so you can insert a template. You can see I've got mine map to command semicolon, so I'll do that. And then um, let's say I wanna create a video and this is going to be on my channel. 
And that already pre-populates a bunch of things that I want to make sure I get done. So I'll put the, t the thumbnail there and the title and, you know, just things that I need to be thinking about when I'm creating that particular bit of content. So for blog posts, this might be different. I might have a different structure. I also work at ksex.io and I create content for them as well. So I wanna make sure that there's a difference in tone. You know, it's more professional when it's put on that side. So I really like using the templates plugin to be able to quickly switch between the two. But let's head back to, oops, let's head back to my content board or my Kanban board. One thing that I've started to do is when I have, when I want to put down ideas, I actually flip back to the markdown view. This is the closest that I think Obsidian gets to being able to display it in table view. So let's quickly show that on a notion you can go to a table view and see it in this sort of format. So I haven't quite been able to replicate that, but this is not bad for my use case for it. You can use tags as well, um, but I haven't really been doing that. So I like this because it's just a really good way to quickly add ideas if, if I'm in the mood to just, you know, bash out a lot of things that I want to get off my head. So going back to the Kanban plug, the Kanban board is just clicking. It's as easy as clicking on open as Kanban board. And we're back here. One thing that I've started to do is use emojis. So if I like edit one of these, these are emojis that I'm using with the emoji toolbar plugin. So I just did a shortcut there so that I can, I can quickly insert one of those emojis. I'm not really a fan of, of using emojis as like file names. For instance, some people do put it in the file name of the note. I just include it here so that it's like a good visual indicator of whether that's for my personal channel or K6 and whether it's for it's a blog post or a video, that kind of thing. So I also have started including thumbnails in the card just to make it easy to see what's what. So here are some of the ones that I've created, and it's just so that I can look at the thumbnails rather than having to read the, the titles if, if I want to. So I also, if you were looking closely, <laughs> you might have noticed that I've got this weird bunch of, of things here at the start of my note. And that's just metadata. So you don't really need to have all of this, but you do need this part if you want to create, to have this on a content calendar. See, the problem is that when you're going and looking at the content board from here, you there is a way to add dates to the, the plugin. So you can have at here and then, and then select a date. Let's say I just want to do it tomorrow and it, it adds the date in there. And it does have tomorrow with a link to that note, but I just haven't found this really that useful because really, if I want to look at a calendar, I would just go to the calendar view I, to, to see what's happening tomorrow or the week after that. I rarely want to see it in card form where I can't really quickly sort by date or, or you know just filter by this week. I mean, maybe somebody will make a plugin to do that. But for now, I'm just sticking to removing this date and setting it in the metadata. So the reason that I do that is because I'm using this cool thing called Fantasy Calendar. So Fantasy Calendar is a plugin that I discovered because I, I did a talk on how to use Obsidian for D&D &D with its creator. His name is Jeremy Valentine, and it was actually a plugin that was created to track time as you progress through a TTRPG campaign. So like my use case for it was Dungeons and Dragons. I play D&D &D three times a week, 
And so it's important to also have a calendar to figure out when the holidays are and whatnot. So that's what it was created for, but I use it for that and for other things that are probably, well, I definitely know that that's not what Jeremy intended, but it works just the same. So to do that, you go to settings and install it. It's, a, it's also a community plugin just like the Kanban plugin was. But when you've got it installed, you go to Fantasy Calendar, and then you can add a new calendar, and you can have several. You can see here that I have uh, three of them that are for d and and one of them for real life shows where my head's at. But then you click Add Calendar, and the first thing you should do is apply a preset. So if you, because we want it for real life, click on Gregorian calendar and then click apply. And I would change the calendar name to something like my content calendar. And then this is already enabled for us, the auto increment day. Otherwise you should tick that. And this is where you set to the date. It seems like it's automatically taken today's date, which is great. Another thing that I would do is set event categories. So there are a bunch of default ones, but really what I would do is keep one, you know, keep one for every channel or every brand that, that you want to create content for. Oh, it looks like I can't delete. Um, I can, I guess I, I have to have two of them, but that that's good because I can do personal, let's say, and then maybe work. So I'm not actually going to save that because I don't want to create a new calendar since I already have one. But once you click save, you should then be able to schedule cards onto it. So if we go back to Obsidian here, this is how we're going to get this particular note showing up in the calendar. I'm going to have November there. Actually, I'm going to hold off on the day and show you what the calendar looks like now. There are two ways that you can look at a calendar, the fantasy calendar anyway. You can expand it here. And then you can see this by default if you already have the fantasy calendar enabled. But if you don't, you can just switch calendars if you have more than one. And you can click on today and it will let you go through each of those days and have this little day view as well. So let's look at 25th because you can see I've got I've got nothing there. So when I click on it, it's asking me to create a new event. So let's see what happens when I put 25 here. That should see the that dot there, that pink dot that just appeared. So now we can double click on it and you can see a link on that day to this note. So imagine like there's a thumbnail there or a video that you've embedded. This is really cool to be able to see it from this view. But sometimes that's a little small, you know. So what I'm going to do is collapse that. And I've got a hotkey for this. But if you don't, you can open up the command pane and then type in fantasy calendar and hit open big fantasy calendar and then select that. And this is what it's going to look like. This is showing you the same view that we saw on the day view, except, well, it's just bigger. So here is, um, this is the, this is this month. And this is the, the note that we just put on the 25th. And let me show you what it looks like when it's something that's published. If you look at that, I've actually embedded the video onto this note and I can even play it from here if I want to. So I've got the thumbnail there and a bunch of other things, or I can click on it from here and it opens up in another pane in Obsidian. So this is just a, a really good way of being able to do the, the things that we were trying to do with Notion, right? So I've got here my content calendar table. I've got, well, the table becomes like the markdown view in Obsidian. I've got the board view, which is, um, which is replicated by the Kanban plugin. And I've also got the calendar view. 
So this combination of plugins has made it so that I've moved my workflows entirely to Obsidian. I'm no longer using Evernote or Notion or Roam Research except for a few things that I haven't quite migrated. But for everything going forward, Obsidian is now my one-stop shop for a second brain, a personal knowledge management system, my D&D campaign tracker, and now a content calendar. So if you want to know what else I'm doing on Obsidian, check out this video on how I use d and oh, how I use Obsidian for work. And if you'd rather watch this video, this is one about how I use Obsidian for D&D. Thank you for watching, or as they say here in the Netherlands, dankjewel, doei!